Dr. Grant. My dear Dr. Thatcher. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of prophetic research ministry with a very special edition of the Watchman Video Broadcast. This is this is the video that I've always wanted to do. I've wanted to do something like this for a long time here. Uh, this is a subject that I have always been fascinated in, and um, I... From a child, one of the very first books that I ever checked out of the Festus Public School Library in first grade was a book on dinosaurs. And I loved it so much that I forgot to take it back to school on library day and ended up keeping the book. Of course, it got. I left it outside and it rained on it and tore it up. My mom was mad at me because she had to pay like $2 to the library to get this thing. Yeah, that was back in the early 70s. Anyway, but I just absolutely love dinosaurs. I love looking at pictures of dinosaurs and reading books about dinosaurs. They were one of my favorite things in the whole world. And we're going to talk about dinosaurs because I believe something about dinosaurs that most people in the world don't believe. Why do I believe what I believe? And I'll tell you what I believe here in a little bit, but why do I believe what I believe? It's because I believe more than anything else in the world, I believe the Bible. And that really is going to be the focus of what we're going to be dealing with here in this video presentation is not so much dinosaurs, but we're going to let, we're going to let dinosaurs teach us how to believe the Bible and why we need to believe the Bible. I want to start out by reading a verse here. Psalm 51. He starts out saying in verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto thy multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. David was begging God, Please take away my sin. And then in the same psalm, in, uh, in verse 10, here's what David said. He said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David used an interesting word here, and I believe it's a word that was given to him by the Holy Ghost as David's writing this song, because David used the word create. One of the things that we believe about God is that God is the creator. Now David is asking God, <clears throat> and just stop for a minute and, and be honest with yourself. David is asking God for something that um, no matter how hard we try, we can't do it ourselves. Um, he's asking God to give him a clean heart. Now, I mean, you know you and I know me. And the truth of it is, we don't have a very clean heart. If people were to really read our mind and understand exactly what we think in the course of a day, we wouldn't have any friends, we wouldn't have any wives or husbands left over, our children would leave us. In fact, we'd leave them because we'd be able to read their mind and say, you're filthy, there's something wrong with you. We have defiled hearts. And we can go through self-help courses. We can watch Tony Robbins on an infomercial. Uh, we can listen to a, a new age guru. We can go into a trance. We can take uh, psychotic uh, drugs. But it doesn't change the fact that we have a bad heart. And so David is asking God, God, I, I need a new heart. And I want you to create one for me. Now how hard is that? So here's the question. If we ask God, and this has to do with salvation, I want to be saved. I want to, I want to know that when I die, I go to heaven. And God has to create a clean heart in me. How hard would it be then if we believed a, a God can create in us a clean heart when we don't have one out of nothing? Can we also believe then that God created everything that is in exactly six days, and according to the timeline of the Bible, somewhere around 6,000 years ago. Not, not the billions of years that the evolutionary scientists say that it took to bring everything that is right now, 
including us, the way we think, the way, uh, the way we walk and talk upright, the way we are, the way we see, everything about our bodies, which is an absolute miracle. How hard is it for us to believe that God could have created, every, God has so much power that he could have created everything in six days, somewhere around 6,000 years ago, and created exactly the way it is right now. How hard would it be for us to believe that? And that's what I want to help you with. I want to help you believe that if God can create the universe in that short amount of time, then it would be easy for Him to create in you a clean heart so that you could live forever. Now I want to ask yourself this question, okay? And and maybe maybe you're watching this, and maybe you maybe you have an idea in your mind that says, uh, you know, um, yeah, I believe in God, yeah, I believe He created everything, but you know, the scientists they all say, you know, it's 15 billion years ago and millions of years ago, and that, you know, maybe maybe they're right, maybe God's right, you know, maybe it's kind of a mix between the two. I'm going to help you with that one too because really those two don't mix very well. And I want want you to ask yourself this question. When I'm having really, really, really deep problems in my life, am I going to turn to scientists or am I going to turn to the Bible? When my marriage is a mess, am I going to call my local biologist and ask him, you know, now is it true? Did we come from monkeys? Because if we came from monkeys, then marriage means nothing. You know, that's kind of how some people are thinking now. And so, which is it? Will you accept what the scientists say who don't believe in God? Or will you accept what the Bible says that will lead you into a greater faith and trust in God so that you can have eternal life? And so, the evolutionary timeline that the scientists have concocted. They give you this idea. Now, we're going to talk about dinosaurs. They give you this idea that... That dinosaurs evolved, oh, let's see here, 248 million years ago. And they roamed the earth. You had the Triassic period, the Jurassic period, the Cretaceous period, you know, 144 million years ago. And then somewhere around 65 million years ago, all the dinosaurs just disappear off the face of the earth. For some reason, we don't know why. And then relatively late, about maybe 14 million years ago, Neanderthal man with his big eyebrows and club in his hand, then then man came along. And so evolutionary science will tell you that man and dinosaur never walked together and lived together. That's what... The evolutionists, the people who don't believe in God and therefore don't believe that God can do a miracle in their life, that's what they're going to say. But I think the Bible is going to tell us something different. And here again, I'm hoping to convey to you the idea that the Bible can be trusted. If we believe the Bible is a good enough book to save us and take us to... if. If we believe the Bible is a good enough book to predict our future, and that is to tell us whether or not we're going to heaven or hell, then can we not trust the Bible to be good enough to tell us accurately what happened in the past? And see, this whole idea of God creating the universe in six days could... In fact, let me, let me go here in my Bible to the beginning. Genesis, that word means beginning. Go to the very beginning chapter of the Bible, the very beginning verse of the Bible. In Genesis 1.1 it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God created it. He made it. It belongs to Him. Um, <clears throat> did He do it in six days? Let's look at how the Bible relates this six-day thing. And let me ask, some people say, well, couldn't God create it all at once? Yes, He could have. But He chose to do it in exactly six days. Why? Because it, it, it means something. It was to be a sign. Notice in Exodus chapter 31, verse 17, God said, it is a sign between...